British atom bomb testing began in October 1952 at Montebello Islands off the West Australian coast. In 1956, the mosaic test explosion spread fallout far across the mainland. Between 1956 and 1963, seven nuclear bombs were exploded above Emu Field and Maralinga in South Australia. The heart of Australia, the horizon rules a line between earth and sky, and man rules a road across the landscape, a road that seems to have no beginning and no end, a signless track that leads only to infinity. In this timeless gibber desert where no streams flow, and where the tallest growing thing is a clump of spinifex grass, man first made his mark so long ago that no one cares to think about it. Today, other men carve new and strange shapes into the desert. Having tested the bombs, the British moved to testing long-range missiles. This was the firing line for Project Menace, the flat path of a weapon that could carry a five-ton atomic warhead from one continent to another. At each end of the land range, they carved huge chunks of Australia out of the map, a land grab on an unprecedented scale agreed to by Australia in the interests of peace and security. The National Archives Defence Science Collection has oral history interviews with personnel who worked on the atom bomb and long-range missile tests during the 1950s and 60s. My name is Walter McDougall. Early in 1930, I went to the Kimberleys in Western Australia as a mission, missionary for the Presbyterian Church as the agricultural officer, uh, where I made my first contact with Aborigines. I spent quite a few years there, and I was then transferred to Ernabella, which is in the Musgrave Ranges in Central Australia. 1947, when the rocket range was being built at Woomera, I was asked to go there as a native patrol officer, and I had to travel quite large distances. My mother had some school holidays with great uncle Walter, and she went out with him in the Jeep as a young girl uh, out of Woomera. And so I heard that, you know, I heard stories of him, I, I, you know, this tall, red-headed, gangly, slightly irascible character, fiercely independent, um, a, a real bushman. My duties at Woomera as the patrol officer was to investigate any area in the bush where the establishment wanted to establish an outpost of any sort. It was suggested that a little bit north of Uldea would be a good site for Maralinga. So I went on patrol in that particular area. As the range was developed, it was necessary to contact people that who, who were still living in their own way of life in the Central Reserve. It was one of my duties to contact people that could have been in an area in which the rocket could be fired and his job was to clear people off the out of the rocket range path and out of the line of fire. An impossible job. So down the range, the weapons research establishment has sighted a web of electronic eyes and ears. To construct these bases, roads had to be pushed out into the desert far beyond even the fading tracks of wandering sheep. Blue Streak number F1 stands ready. The first bird chosen to fly whose launch date set down for May 25th, 1964, becomes Australia's space age birthday. And leave on these bearings. 39 on both sides, Tower. Roger, 39. McDougall knew that um, 
there were indeed people out there. In March 1959, McDougall got approval to acquire a, quote, sturdy camera and tape recorder, as this would be beneficial to the department. Information and material fast disappearing would be placed on permanent record. The department thought this would be of no use to the weapons research establishment, but they agreed to the request as an amenity to the patrol officers. During his career with weapons research, McDougall shot a lot of film, slides and photographs, but almost everything is now lost. There are photos of people seeing a white man for the first time and he must have taken them because he was out there by himself. But I have not seen any, um, any moving, any, you know, film footage, I'm afraid. So I, I just don't know. I, it's certainly supposed to exist. What does remain of McDougall's 16 millimetre footage includes the most compelling moment ever captured on film in Australia. A group of about 20 Matu women and children coming out of the desert to encounter white men for the first time. I have spent virtually all my working life with the bush Aborigines, and I sometimes get very annoyed when I hear people speak of them as uneducated. They uh, are illiterate, but far from uneducated. When I was trying to contact them originally, I would drive up to where there was a fire, a hunting fire lit, and the, the tracks, their tracks were there quite plain to see, but I couldn't find them. In past experience, I knew that uh, if they didn't want to be seen, it, uh, it was not possible for the white man to find them. They were so very good at, at hiding. The story of this encounter and the clearing of the Western Desert for weapons testing is told in the book Cleared Out and in the film Contact. This tape continues on the second side of the cassette and you should turn it over now. I tried to learn the language and for a long time they accepted my efforts, being very polite people, and we got a good working arrangement where I could understand most of what they said and they could understand me fairly well. Subsequently I discovered that I was using very bad grammar, but they were too polite to tell me of this. When they'd heard that I'd been to Adelaide to do a school, uh, a language school, they got much more severe, and in fact I was constantly pulled up for using bad grammar. He knew he couldn't fully guarantee that they would be out of, out of harm's way with the rockets and with the bomb tests at Merrill England. But he was sort of pressured and he did sign off on it in the end. He did sign off that, yes, this is all OK to do it. He was always conflicted in that. But, but fundamentally, I think he was, a, he was a good man who respected Aboriginal people mm. and understood them probably a lot better than most in that era. Today, the Matu people have regained their country and make their own films. We better leave it at that and see.